because you asked about the line between prose and poetry. <coughs> Sparrows were feeding in a freezing drizzle that, while you watched, turned to pieces of snow, riding a gradient invisible from silver aslant to random, white, and slow. There came a moment that you could not tell, and then they clearly flew instead of fell. Now I'm going to start with the title, and I'm going to notice that the first word of my title here is because. Anytime I see because, I'm going to realize that somewhere there is a why question, and that this is the answer. So I know if it says because, the poet wants me to think, what would the question have been? So, since the title is Because You Asked About the Line Between Prose and Poetry, I'm going to stop and think for a second. What could the question be? So, I'm going to stop and think, why? Why what? Because you asked it. It occurs to me that the question is, why did you write this? And it works together. So if I ask, why did you write this? And then I say, because you asked about the line between prose and poetry. I go, okay, that makes perfect sense. Now I look here, and I see about the line. I'm pretty sure that they don't literally mean line. I'm pretty sure that this means difference. And I note that right here, These are usually thought of as antonyms, poetry and prose. So, I'm going to go into the poem now thinking, this is an attempt to explain the difference between prose and poetry. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to try to figure out what the heck is just actually happening in this poem. So I look and I see that we have sparrows and they're feeding, there's a rain, and I see that it turns to snow. And then as I look at this, writing a gradient invisible from silver aslant to random white and slow, I realize that all of this is just describing that process of turning into snow. So in this stand, the first stanza, all that's happening is sparrows are eating, there's a freezing rain coming down, and while I watch it all, it turns to snow. Then I get the second stanza. There came a moment that you couldn't tell, and then they clearly flew instead of fell. Now right, a minute, right away I'm, I'm wondering a number of things. First of all, it says, there came a moment that you couldn't tell. And I'm immediately wondering, tell, what do you mean? Tell, tell what? Tell a story? Tell a joke? Tell a secret? None of those seem to make sense. So I start to think, What's another meaning for tell? And I think, wait a minute, it could be tell the difference between. Like, I couldn't tell if you were coming or going. So if it's that kind of tell, what could it be? And as I think about it, I realize there came a moment that you couldn't tell. It's been talking about rain turning to snow. You couldn't tell what? You couldn't tell if it was rain or if it was snow. Because this whole first part is talking about falling rain turning into snow. The only thing that this can be referring to, the only thing you can be talking about telling, is whether it's rain or snow. Then I have this problem. Then they. And I'm wondering what they are, is. They must refer to something else. If I say he, you're immediately wondering, who is he? Is it Drew? Is it Brandon? Who is he? So I look at it and I think, what is they? It's third person, plural. So it can't be you, because that's also another pronoun. What is the they? I look up here, and I see that there are two things it could be. It could be sparrows, and it could be pieces. Now, if I go back and I think that maybe it's sparrows, that doesn't make sense. 
because we're talking about how I couldn't tell whether it was rain or snow, and then suddenly the sparrows flew instead of fell. Well, to begin with, sparrows don't even fall. They always fly. Even when they're going down, they're flying. So it doesn't make sense to say that the sparrows flew instead of fell. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So this one cannot be sparrows. So I asked myself the question, what else could it be? The only other thing that is plural up here is the S, the pieces. The pieces of snow. And then it hits me. When snow, when rain turns to snow, it stops looking like it's falling, and it starts looking like it's flying. Maybe not flying, but maybe floating. So, what I get from this is the following. In the first stanza, we're talking about one. Sparrows eat. Two. Rain becomes snow. That's really what's going on. The second half, number three, down here. What's going on? I'm referring back to here, and I can't tell. Is it rain or is it snow? So I figured out what's going on in this poem, physically. Sparrows are eating while I watch them eat. This freezing rain turns to snow, and there's a moment when I can't tell whether it's rain or snow. But I'm still wondering, what the heck does this have to do with poetry and prose? So then I start to think, wait a minute. Mr. Scott said, poetry always goes the indirect way. It never just comes out and says directly. So this must be an indirect way of telling me what the difference between poetry and prose is. So I'm starting to think, how can I get into this from here? How is this telling me the difference between poetry and prose? Well, if I'm listing two things in here, poetry and prose, because it's telling me the difference between poetry and prose, it must be telling me the difference between two things in the poem, I would hope. So now, the only two things that I can tell that it could possibly be telling a difference between is rain and snow. It's not really comparing sparrows and snow. That doesn't make any sense. It's not comparing sparrows and rain. That doesn't make any sense. And then it hits me all of a sudden. Poetry and prose, they're both made out of words. They're the same thing at heart. Rain and snow are both made out of water. At their heart, they're the same things. So now I'm kind of getting an idea. I think the poet is trying to tell me that poetry and prose have the same relationship as rain and snow. And what is that relationship? Well, the relationship is essentially it's the same essence, the same thing at its heart. It just looks different, acts different, one falls, one flies. So in the end, what I'm left thinking is that he is saying something along these lines. Poetry is to prose as snow is to rain. It's the same essence. It just looks and acts different. Now we could go even further with this. We could take a look at what is the difference between poetry and, excuse me, rain and snow as far as how it falls? Well, one falls really fast, one falls really gently. What is the difference in how it acts on what it falls on? Well, rain usually falls and kind of soaks into the ground unless it's a flood, but generally it just kind of disappears. Poetry kind of piles, excuse me, snow kind of piles up one layer on top of another on top of another. 
kind of like my thinking about this poem is doing. One layer is kind of piling up on top of each other. <coughs> Poetry kind of sticks around. Snow kind of sticks around. Prose kind of goes in your ear and out your ear. Just like rain kind of comes in the ground, through the ground, and disappears. Unless it's going to flood. So, what is the poet trying to tell me about poetry and prose? How did I do that? There it is. With this poem. I think at its heart it's telling me that there's really not that much of a difference. It's made out of the same thing. It just sort of looks a little different. One is a little slower. One is a little more layered. One is a little more pretty than the other and cut. Now what skills did I use?